Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, depending on your location, um, where I am, it's currently 3 p.m. West African time. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is uh, this presentation is uh, it's on um, cloud collaborative working, and um, today's presentation will be focused on uh, Microsoft SharePoint and Teams. Um, our last week presentation was on um, BIM360 and how to set that up, um, how to set up BIM360 for cloud collaborative working. And um, because BIM360 is uh, project centric, I think that doesn't really solve the need for remote working in the industry. Some offices or most offices actually need to have their own in-house storage system, which uh Microsoft SharePoint and Teams tend to solve. And then, so today's presentation, like I said, basically is on Microsoft SharePoint and Teams and how to connect that to being 360. So um, starting with the presentation, myself, I am Christopher Ibebulem, partner and uh, computational design and beam specialist Blaze founder computational design group. Africa, and uh, I'll be the one presenting for today. And um, our presentation will be, like I said, basically Microsoft Teams and Microsoft SharePoint. Uh, so what is Microsoft Teams? Microsoft Teams is the hub for, for Office 365, integrating people, content, and tools. Every team needs to be more active and, um, engage, and keeping the team engaged. Why SharePoint is the hub for, uh, SharePoint is more like a cloud storage, um, uh, if you've used OneDrive or OneDrive for Business before, you'll be more familiar with um, SharePoint. Oh, SharePoint wouldn't be too difficult to actually grasp as it's, um, it's like OneDrive, but just instead of it being just a um, storage system, it's more like a, an internal web address or web or URL for every project. And um, you could set up storage, people could co-author documents, people could, uh, you could set up file versioning. So instead of having to actually add version one, version two, version three on files. You, just, you could actually set up SharePoint to actually uh, automate that for you and leverage on the powers of um, file versioning on SharePoint and some other things too. And the good thing about Microsoft Teams and SharePoint is that because they are all part of the Microsoft ecosystem, they are connected. So I'll show you how to actually set up um, an account on Microsoft Office because um, typically for Typically for uh, an office example, you usually have one IT person and that IT person is uh, the whoever it is, or maybe probably you have a BIM manager and an IT person. These are the people in charge of setting up um, office um, uh, storage system. And then what they do is they register an account, they register an, yeah, an admin account with Microsoft Office, um, subscribe to the uh, Microsoft Office Business Premium or Microsoft Office Business Premium Essential, which would actually change to being just Microsoft Office. I think that should be from April 7th, uh, sorry, from May 7th, I guess. And um, part, of the, part of this presentation will be showing you how to actually set up an account, an admin account, assign users, create groups, create teams, and then have um, them connected to the, have them connected to SharePoint. Okay, so before that, um, looking at the pros and cons of using Microsoft Teams and SharePoint, because obviously there are other, um, other solutions out there in the industry. And um, like I said earlier, these are, they lot, are not project specific solutions. So they are not like, um, BIM 360, where every storage, every single project you create has its own storage um, system. These are tailored towards non-project specific files or non-project non -project specific documentation, sort of. So what it means is that outside projects, your team internally has to, they need to have a way to actually collaborate on, 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 uh, on documents or co-author documents that are, that would letter or maybe not, but most times let us find their way into the project document um, that's the common data environment. So this could serve as a common data environment sort of, but it, it's not robust enough to actually 
um, is not robust enough to actually carry out functions as ro as um, robust the way uh, Intrinsics actually does. So for Microsoft Teams, the, uh, the pros, uh, productivity gains, and then risk communication. So you have your files, and you also have some kind of um, a mail trail system, uh, and mail trail and chat system that your um, team members can actually use for communication. So you have less emails. Yes, you actually have less emails. You have uh, better focus on your work, increased transparency because everything is open. It's not like you're hiding or you're sending emails behind the scene or thereabout. Then seamless move to digital workspace, yes. Then new team members can more quickly get up to speed. Microsoft Teams is quite easy to use. And then the cons is that it's a difficult transition from Outlook. If you're if you're used to Outlook, it might seem a bit um, difficult to transition from Outlook to Microsoft Teams, then the structure of files confuse users. Yes, I even experts to complain about this, but I think Microsoft is doing something to mitigate that. Then for SharePoint, it uh, gives a consistent user experience, makes day-to-day -day business easier, satisfies regulatory requirements in terms of security and all that, then manage and reuse content. So because, uh, I mean, somebody else wants to work on your file, you don't need to like copy it to one, file or flash drive, give to somebody to go and walk, and then at the end of the day, you now make it together. No, everything is in one system. You can co-author documents. So while somebody is working on the document, you can actually be seen as the person is working live, and you know, okay, you know what, take, page, take pages one to 10, and we, this other person takes pages 11 to 20, they're about depending on how you intend to structure the workflow. Connect employees with information and expertise, speed up shared business processes. Yes, there are other, um, productivity gains that come with using Microsoft SharePoint, empower employees for decision making, provide integrated system, and then, which is the largest of it all, I'll, I think, which is the main reason why we are even taking on this webinar is the connection to Microsoft Teams and channels. And so I'll be, um, I'll be showing you guys how to do all that um, as we move on. Um, so straight up, we'll be going to the demo because um, there's not much. Um, talk here because share, SharePoint and Teams, are, we're not used to these interfaces or platforms in the AES industry. So straight up, we'll be uh, delving into the demo. So try to share my screen. Okay. Okay. Just a minute. Um, Okay, so first things first, uh, for us to actually create an account, an admin account. Sorry. I'm trying to show you the process of actually creating an admin account. So. so, first of all, you look at um, Products and uh, you can see buy of stresses five. It will take us to where you have all the products for business, and then you have um, on that business you have office stresses five business. You have office three six five. Um, can you guys see my screen? So I'll be sure that I'm actually presenting. Yes, we can. Okay, you have office three six five business per business, which is um eight dollars per user per month. You have Office 365 Business Premium and then Office 365 Business Essential. But um, by, I think, April 21st, all this will condense into being just Microsoft 365. You have Business Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and thereabouts. So it won't be called Office 365 Business, uh, Business Premium and Business Essentials anymore. And then each of these, um, each of these uh, uh, packages actually have their own pros and cons. They have what are actually included like for the um Tristus 5 business you have outlook and thereabouts you have one drive included for the Tristus 5 premium you have one drive sharepoint and teams included and then for this last one business essential you have one drive sharepoint teams but you don't have access to outlook word excel powerpoint publisher and all that and then each of them are come with their own file storage system uh, one terabyte storage for file sharing that this is for each user while for the general um, the entire office you have 25 terabytes you are assigned 25 terabytes of storage 
which you can upgrade, you can add more um, depending on use case and how uh, uh, you want to use it. Then for this exercise, I'll be showing you how to try free for one month, um, just for the sake of um, this exercise, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, try for one month. Okay, so typical setup, put in your email address, your office email address, that is the email address of whoever is the whoever is supposed to have access to or become the admin. Well, probably, typically, it's usually the um, IT personnel in the office or the BIM manager in your office. Those are people that would um, set up the account and then you go through the process. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. And um, I won't be doing that now, but just to show you that you can actually register for that. And then I think they have um, they have um, some kind of um, um, incentive at the moment because of the COVID-19, where if you pay for one year, you get um, six months free. So your first six months is free, while the remaining uh, one year is obviously what you paid for. So you're getting one year, six months of that. So after, you, after you're done with the setup, uh, first, Next thing is to sign in. Go back to this. Okay. Sorry. I'm not supposed to be doing this live. But, uh, okay. So once you're done with your signing and all that, you get this um, typical um, office portal, and then you go to the admin section. Of the portal. Okay. So once you're in, this is the admin portal of um, Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And with this, you can now navigate to users. You add more users to the account. Uh, you have groups. You have groups. You can also control billing, purchase, uh, purchase services. Probably if you want to. Okay. Let me take us to that. So we. Family. Okay, like I said, this is these are the new tiers you you probably be having going forward. This is this is the old one which they are retiring, and then you have the new one: Microsoft 365 Business, 365 E3, 365 Month to Month, and all, all that. There are more, but everything will now be condensed under Microsoft 365. And over here, you have um, like I said, you have your users, contacts, guest users, and then let's go quickly go to users. Uh, currently, I have just two for now because of this presentation and then you can add more users like add users to your company's accounts and then with this everybody is um, within one one whole ecosystem you can add users and then assign licenses to them like you can see here you can choose which of uh, the licenses you want to assign to them and then other optional settings give them administrative rights and then you can finish that up i won't be adding any user for now okay then um, talking about groups. Okay, so talking about groups, each group on your um, each group you're you're actually assigned here. Look at let's look at groups like departments in your office. So you have for a typical uh, let me take like the architecture office. You have the HR department. You have the studio. You have the admin. You have um, just typical departments you have. You have the finance department, yes. And so each group you add, each group you add, you choose what services or what um, kind of um, what kind of uh, um, needs they they uh, they want. So you choose your groups based on their needs. There are groups that are just only for mails, like you just want to have them. So you can if you want to send out emails. Uh, or um, just strictly for email distribution. You just add them, create it as an email, and then that means if you want the whole staff in your office to be part of that, then you add all of them to that group, and then knowing that if you send an email to that group's email address, it gets to everybody in the office. Or if it, um, like our case, we have um, what we have here, which is the, uh, sorry, which is Blaze Project, as you can see. This is, um, our in our group for our projects within the within Blaze, and then uh, once you create a group, you can like you can see Microsoft Teams. You can assign you can assign a team to each group you have here. So 
just as um, like I said, once you create because of, because everything is connected, you create a group. You can assign a SharePoint uh, um, address, a SharePoint site. You can assign a Microsoft team to that same group, and then everything is connected. So, talking about SharePoint, um, within the admin center, you have the SharePoint um, admin space also. So, from here, you can actually manage um, SharePoint. You can actually manage um, your SharePoint sites. So, I just want to show you. Um, you see that same Blaze projects uh, group I have in uh, in my admin portal. I also have it here as a SharePoint um, site. So if I click on this link, it takes me to that site. So one thing with SharePoint is that it's not just it's not just one drive alone. It is one drive plus other extra features like um, where you have the documents. This is your file storage of which you have. You get. Um, depending on your setting on how you actually intend to allocate storage to each department. So if you have you have 25 terabytes of storage to actually play with, so you can decide to allocate um, 10 terabytes for your project. You allocate one terabyte for finance documents, one terabyte for the HR department, just like that. And then you can buy more storage if you want, actually. If you need um, extra storage, maybe 50 terabytes or thereabouts, you can add more. And the higher you go, the more money you pay. You should just be well, um, have that at the back of our mind. So now, once you create um, a SharePoint um, site, by default, you have something, you have a folder within it. Um, you have a folder by default, general. Then I'll show you where this general comes into play when I move over to Teams and how Microsoft Teams is actually connected to SharePoint. Um, so going back to the admin, I want, just want to take you around the admin portal so that um, we get familiar with it in case if you're the IT manager or if you're the B manager within your office, so you, you have to fami familiarize yourself with this um, portal. So you have user management, you can add users, edit users, you decide who installs, who gets um, office installed. And the good thing about this is, uh, let me go to the users um, portal. Uh, myself and i'm um, looking at license and apps you can see uh you could actually decide who gets what and who actually gets to actually use either of the um application so you can assign licenses to people maybe some people may not want you may not need sharepoint you turn it off some people may not need microsoft teams you turn it off some people may not need um, some other extra services um you can turn them off if you don't want those users to actually uh, make use of those services, you can also make in the other users in the office um, admin. So, for example, you have um, what you call what I call what they call uh, manage roles. So you can actually make other users um, admin, give them admin rights. For example, if you have an IT manager and a B manager, you want the two of them to actually be able to access the portal and then assign services depending on their needs, or probably head of departments. You know, if they are if they are savvy enough to actually um, navigate the portal, you assign them um, admin rules of which they can assign. They can assign um, um, users licenses based on need, or they can also also create uh, individual SharePoint sites for their own team or group for their own team. Like I said, and then you have other things like um, roles. You can You can change roles depending on you. So you have user admin, exchange admin, you can add more if you want. And then resources, you have rooms and equipment and these ones are for uh, ERP, enterprise resource management, and then um, enterprise resource planning and management, sorry. And then other settings and setup. Also within uh, the Microsoft admin um, center. So without uh, staying much on this, I'll move over to um, SharePoint, yeah. Also within the SharePoint admin, SharePoint also has its own admin center too, of which of which, um, if you go into the OneDrive admin center, this is where you can assign, uh, okay, it's needing me to sign in again. Okay, so from here you can assign storage, like I said, you can assign storage to um, each of the departments. So for now, what I've, uh, I have here is one terabyte for each department of which you can increase it or reduce it depending on um, how you intend. So by default, this is like for every site, every team that you create, they have 
access to one terabyte of storage. Okay, so one other thing I want to say is um, that for every group you create in the admin center, they get a SharePoint site and they get a Microsoft Team channel. You get so that's why I said because it is the Microsoft um, Microsoft ecosystem, everything is connected in a way. So you have a group in the Microsoft Admin Center, they automatically get um, a SharePoint um, address and they automatically also get it, um, they become a team or yes, they become a team in Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Teams. Okay. So um, pretty much as you can see, I've actually, I, I already have, uh, sorry, I need to show you groups. Under groups, I already have one group and I've already assigned a team member as, um, I've already assigned a team member myself and then also the team has been set up automatically. So I'll log into the other end of my own account. And then showing you what it is like within, this is, uh, this is Microsoft Teams, like you can see. Now, this general that is here, this general that I have here, remember when I shared, when I was showing, uh, okay, this is trying to load. So, remember when I opened, when I shared this, uh, when I shared this, sorry, just a minute. Just a minute. Okay. I'm trying to open back uh, SharePoint website. Okay, yes. This general you see here is the same general you're seeing. I think I should uh, take this. It's the same general you're seeing um, in here. For every, uh, within Teams, there's a structure also. So in Teams, so in Teams, you also have a structure too. So within Teams, you have a team and then you have channels. So think of channels like your projects. So for every project, you create a new channel for that. And every channel, it's automatically, it automatically generates a folder within SharePoint. So just to give you an idea of how that works. I'll try to open this here. Okay, so you can see I have general. So within Teams, because I have been assigned as um, the admin for under Blaze projects, I'll create a new channel. And typically, the way we name our channels, uh, let me go with, um, test. Okay, and then standard, I say private, accessible, okay. So I put, private so I can control and uh, I think um, I'll skip this since I don't want to add anybody else. Good. So once I do this, I'll go back to um, this address, refresh. Okay, I think it usually takes a minute or two to actually come up, so. Okay, it's doing that now, perfect. So. Anyway, still wondering why it's not showing up here yet, but ordinarily we're supposed to see um, a folder created here, because it has already done that for us. Within this space, okay. Let me click on opening SharePoint. Okay, yeah. So it automatically creates a folder for us in SharePoint, like we can see here. I okay, should go back to the yeah. By default, it creates a, pro a folder for each uh, project within SharePoint. And then um, going back to Teams, you have what you call tabs. And with this tab, you can add other functions too within uh, Microsoft Teams. So 
um, I'll come back to this later. So within the Microsoft team, you have posts. This is where users get to come and talk about the project in general. So if you have any any information about the, that particular project. So if you have any um, particular um, information about that project, you can actually, you know, um, get to send that information here. You need not to send emails anymore. And then within this, if you are actually the admin for the channel, you can actually manage the channel, um, add members if you want. Um, we, um, go to settings, set member permissions, who gets to send messages, who gets to remove messages, how users could actually access um, the channel, talking about mentions and other fun stuff within um, the teams. Then right here, you can actually look at analytics, summary of users, how users are actually using, um, or actually, yes, using Microsoft Teams this particular for this particular channel. And then you have other things. Um, let me get back, okay. And then you can actually, you know, get an email address for this particular, uh, particular project. So if you have, um, for instance, if you have other external collaborators and you want them to send in an email address and everybody within this particular channel gets that email address, this is where you actually get that. And then once the email address is set up, share this email address with um, whoever, any external user and then they get to you know, email everybody in the team at the same time. You can actually add members who are not part of your, part of your organization. And remember, that can only be set, that could be set when, you remember, this channel was actually set as a private channel. If you want to add members who are not part of the organization, but you want them to be part of the team for this particular project, you can actually, at the point of creating um, a new channel, you make sure that it is standard, accessible to everyone on the team, and then also um, members that are not part of your organization too. Okay, let me go back to this. Talking about files, if I, um, just for the sake of uh, demonstration, if I add a new folder here, if I add a new folder here and I go back to, sorry, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you, I can hear you. Okay. So, if um, I actually go back to this um, particular project, so it takes quite some time to just um, show up, but everything is quite synchronized. So you can see that folder I've added within Microsoft Teams here actually shows up on SharePoint, right? Okay, so um, this is just to show you the connection between Teams and SharePoint. So whatever you're doing on the team side, just be rest assured that it is actually affecting on the uh, um, is actually affecting on the SharePoint end because they are connected. Also, um, talking about um, co-authoring documents. So, if I start a new document, for example, So within Microsoft Teams, you can actually co-author documents within Microsoft Teams. And then whoever it is that is accessing that particular document from, from SharePoint to, you can actually see as your, and just for the sake of demonstration, let me do this, uh, this end. You can see what I typed here. Is also displaying here at the same time and it's showing who it is that is actually authoring that document or who has actually typed in whatever it is. So depending on your workflow, it could de depend on how you actually um, author documents within your organization. You could have somebody, one person taking up page one to 10, the other person taking up page 10. So you don't have conflicting information at the same time. So, but this is to show you the connection between, like I said, Microsoft Teams and then, um, Microsoft Teams and SharePoint. Okay, so um, close this. Okay, and then one other good thing about uh, this is that it, 
apart from it being on the browser, it wasn't necessarily always be. It wasn't necessarily always be on the browser. So you can actually synchronize um, a particular, uh, like this project, for example. Or um, let me open this one. Okay. So for this, I can actually synchronize this particular um, project folder. Let me take it to this. I can actually synchronize this particular project folder to my desktop, to my um, to my local drive. So if I click on synchronize, like I just did here, it's trying to synchronize this folder now to my um, local drive. So I mustn't always open the browser to access this document. I can access it locally from my uh, from my file explorer, which I'll show just in a minute. Okay, so um, if you look at, I've opened my file explorer and you can see under Blaze Incorporated, I still have that same project here on my desktop. So as easy as ABC, right? And then same document I was um, co-authoring online. I can actually open that same document here and co-author at the same time too within my local drive. So I don't really need to... Okay, Let's try to open. Okay, so back to... So once that is done, I mean, whatever it is that is actually um, happening within this folder, you, you, you keep getting it on your local drive, on your desktop. Uh, Windows File Explorer there, so you can actually be part of um, the project. This way, you don't actually need to, you know, copy your files and flash drive or hard drive, take home, work on the uh, on that document, bring it back to the office, and then I like, know everything is connected. Now, this is for uh, non-project specific files, but how about we co we could connect? Um, let's say you have a Bintricity license, for example, you have a project, and then how about you could connect? Both what's what's on Bing 360 and then that connect bring that to the Microsoft team so you guys could actually um, or project participant could actually you know take screenshots talk about um, documents on Bing 360 and all that so pretty easy you have this button here which is um, which you can use to add more tabs you can add Excel files one notes you can have wiki pages with this wiki pages you can use it to sp spell out um, you know, templates, libraries, and all that within your organization. You can have it as a wiki page, and then everybody, so nobody will say, I mean, I didn't, I could not actually access the um, template document or access the um, library file or access some other form of documentation or standards you have within your office. So, concerning BIM 360, we'll be using the um, website tab, and pretty straightforward. You have, you can name it BIM 360. And typically, what you need is to actually get the link of the project on Beam 360. You want to. Just a minute, so. Okay. 
Okay, still using the same beam. So what I can do is I copy take this and then under the link here, paste and save. Now I'm I'm able to do this because I am the admin for this particular project, and um, I've not given any user the right to actually add this. So it depends on how you want to also structure your workflow within your organization. Who should be actually be who should be in charge of these tools? Who should be in charge of actually the setup? So yes, there's actually a learning curve and a fairly um, there's actually the need for setup and training for this. Yes, but at the long run, you start seeing that as you continue to use these um, tools, it becomes part of your organization. So everybody now understands that, look, this is the way we work, which is obviously typically different from uh, the way a lot of offices are actually structured at the moment, where you have your local server domiciled within your office, and then uh, where you have scenarios like what is happening now, the COVID-19 pandemic, and then people go home, they can't really access those files from, they can't really access the files from the server because there's no connection between, uh, okay, so there's no connection between them and the server in, domiciled in the office. And again, um, Microsoft Teams, you don't really always have to access it from the browser. There's also a Teams app. Um, I'll try to load that in. Why this is trying to load a lot of things shortly. Okay, let's just give it some, some minutes to load. Okay. Take this URL instead and then modify this. Paste. Okay, this is going to go faster. Okay. So, while that is loading, um, I just want to, I want to show you the, uh, the team app. So, this is the team app as well. Within the team app, I can also see, you know, the project, the files. I can also access the files too for that particular project. Remember the folder we just created, the document, and then this particular um, document also we created. Then also within from the team's app also, you don't really need the browser to actually access this. You can access the BIM 360 um, project. Try to log in for the first time. So from here you can take and begin to navigate uh, the Bing 360 for, uh, project. It takes me directly to that team project. I did mean I um, let's say I add another channel. Sorry. If I add another channel.
again i'm doing this like i said because i have admin access to this uh particular um i have access to this particular um admin access to this particular um team so i'm adding i have um the right to add channels as much as i want uh, let's say um i want to use uh project we used for the last webinar so add that to this this load <clears throat> You guys were not unable to see my screen for some time. Can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. So um, on this, I've added the uh, the 360 project, the um, last the one we actually used for the um, last um, demonstration. So you can see straight into the same. Um, um, and I can access um, the models from here. I don't need to, you know, jump back between um, Teams and Beam 360. So it's straight up. I'm I'm able to access all the documents well about this particular project from within Beam 360 because that's the way I've um, set up the connection. And it's pretty straightforward. Copy a link, set it up, and all that. You can see all this within the 360 teams. I've not left the 360 teams. I'm sorry, uh, Microsoft Teams. I've not left. Uh, and as usual, if I wanted to query any of the plans, uh, plan documents in here, I can also do my markup within this um, case, take measurements. Free state forward. Okay, so um, with this, I end the demo and then we'll move over to uh, question and answers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christopher. So please, if you have any question concerning how to integrate the MPCC or Microsoft SharePoint or Teams or anything discussed so far in this webinar series, feel free to type it into the chat box or you can also indicate by raising your hand and unmute your mic and ask your question. Hi this, is, hi, this is Gary speaking here. Um, um, I just wanted to find out, um, the, I, I think I missed uh, the, the first 15 minutes or so from, this, from, the, from the start. Um, I just wanted to find out from SharePoint, do, we, do you have to go and set up all those uh, permissions and stuff like that in SharePoint to be able to do this whole collaboration thing? What is the limitations of just using it out of the box if you were a novice uh, uh, um, um, IT um, user and stuff like that. Yeah, from SharePoint by default, you can actually go in and set up um, permissions and stuff as much as you want. It's quite um, exhaustive, but out of the box, you can start up and then over time, you know, get to understand um, the platform and then set up uh, set up permission levels just as you would want within your organization. So it's by default, it's. Um, it's something you can always start immediately. You, you can always start using just um, out of the box. And then as you progress and discover some other new um, features within SharePoint, then you can add or you can actually um, use the privacy features um, 
uh, kind of like assign permissions to participants or um, collaborators within SharePoint, the level of, um, depending on the level of access you want to give them. Okay, cool. Uh, the next one, one is, um, I'm seeing a, a hell of a potential here because I've already done what you've just done with a couple of my projects in Teams. And I mean, if, I, if I'm going to show this to some of my engineers, they're going to be extremely happy about this because it's one, one point or one source of uh, app that you need to go to and you can go and do whatever you need to do. Um, okay. That's number one. Number two is, um, are you looking at uh, plugging in Power BI into this um, um, for some sort of uh, analytics? Yeah, sure. You can actually plug in Power BI. Since Power BI is also part of the Microsoft ecosystem, so it could be, um, I think I should share that. Uh, let me do this. You can see my screen, right? Yeah, I can see the, I can see yeah. the app um, on the tab, yeah. Exactly. So you can see there's Power BI here. Yeah, you can actually add Power BI reports and all that and get analytic, and, uh, analytic and, um, and dashboards and, we, and all that. And would you store that? So, so obviously for Power BI, you would either need to extract that from some source of uh, database or something like that. Um, would you be able to do that in SharePoint as well? Basically sharing the information in SharePoint or maybe an Excel file. Well, there's many ways you could probably do that, but... Uh, um, would yeah, you then yeah. store? Would you store that information in the SharePoint as your 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 common storage uh, um, 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 item? Well, it depends. You know, you could actually have that information stored in SharePoint on Beam Three Hundred and Sixty because Beam Three Hundred and Sixty also has a connection to Power BI. You could actually connect Beam Three Hundred and Sixty to Power BI. So it, it's depending on where where the information is actually coming from. If it's coming from your your model, obviously it will be on Beam Three Hundred and Sixty. Then, if it's coming from within your office, then it will be on SharePoint. Like I said, Beam 360 is project centric, and then SharePoint is um, non project centric. So, for non project files, uh, our advice you store them on SharePoint, and then project files you leave them on Beam 360 for the sake of access and collaborative workflow. So, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Um, last last one is, uh, do, is there a, a, a add-in or a web add-in for Power BI into BIM 360 or how do you do that? Yes, there is. Um, I think I should open it. So there's a web add-in for Power BI on BIM 360. I'll share that um, quickly. Sorry, put it on. Okay, so um, on the um, BIM 360 project home, all what you have here, like um, cards, you can actually customize that, and then you have a card library. If you scroll down, you have, um, looking at these libraries here, oh. uh, Power BI over here. So if you have a Power BI, um, if you have Power BI li um, license or you purchase Power BI, you can actually connect that to your project and then it it's live. It reads information directly from your models or from your project, depending on how you set it up. Excellent. Cool. Thanks. That's all from my side. Okay. Thank you very much for asking. Okay. Thank you for the question. Hey, they also message that saying there is a chance, and then nobody at the point. If you have a question, finally unmute your mic and ask your question. All right, thank you very much, guys. Um, well, for someone like me, uh, this is a whole lot to take in at the point. Um, and I, just like from the last uh, video, you had indicated that uh, the recording will be made available for us to download and be able to go through uh, uh, some of these steps. So I just want to know if uh, the same applies for this. And I am yet to even find the link to be able to download the last one. Thank you. Okay. Um Okay, yes, um, for the link um, for the last one, the last recording, it was actually shared, shared to all participants that actually registered to, your, to their email address. But if you can't find it there, just go to our YouTube channel um, at Blaze Thread, that's our YouTube channel, and then you can find the video on our YouTube channel. It's actually uploaded on our YouTube channel. 
yes, Blaze Academy, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you can find the you can find a video on our YouTube channel. Then for these also, yes, we are recording and would also uh would also share um the recording too. Also, if um if you actually need setup for this, let's say you have a you are a kind of a CEO or some kind of um, top management within your office, and you need setup for this, we actually offer this service. This as a service within Blaze, so we set up for you for you know remote working and all that. Even on being even being three sixty and all the connection I just displayed here, it's a lot deeper than what I just done. What I just did, sorry, and. Um, this is um, like basic for anybody who wants to actually roll and roll it out immediately for their office um, uh, use. But there, there, there's more, obviously. There's more. Okay, someone is um, saying, okay, I'll put the link. Um, I'll put the link. Um, put the link. So, well, Mr. King, I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, I just uh, sent the link for the YouTube channel uh, on the I just sent the link out now, so you can use the link from the um, chat section to actually access the um, channel. Okay, any more questions? I'm good. Thanks very much for this. It was very informative. Really appreciate it. Okay, thank you too for attending. Okay, um, since we don't have any more questions, thank you all for attending. I hope um, you guys enjoyed the presentation and you learned um, quite a lot from it. Um, still stay tuned. We have more sessions coming next week. We have sessions with um, quite a lot of um, inspiring and um, wonderful presentations coming on next week. So, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, uh, thank you guys very much. Can you check your email to be sending some updates yeah, and reminders? Okay, we'll, um, we'll be sending um, updates and reminders also for this particular. Uh, we'll send you obviously the, uh, the link to this particular recording and then updates and reminders also for the next um, series of um, webinars too. Thank you very much. Sure, thank you guys.